Good afternoon to one and all present here. We welcome you all to the second day of the three-day online training program on infrastructure health mapping standards and retrofitting of built-up facilities. This online training program is jointly organized by Civil Engineering and Construction Review and National Institute, Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India powered by Revered Media. Welcoming our distinguished speakers for the day, Professor Chandan Ghosh, Professor and Head, Resilient Infrastructure Division, NIDM, Government of India, Dr. Bo Dr. Gopal Rai, Director, RNM International, Mr. Nitin S. Verma, Managing Partner, Aadhaar Consultancy and Infrastructure, Mr. Ratish Jain, Managing Director, Resistoflex Group. Before we start with today's session, we would like to present a summary of day one training program on infrastructure health mapping standards and retrofitting of build up facilities. An educational and insightful day one of this online training program was graced with the opening remarks by Professor Chandan Ghosh, Head Resilient Infrastructure Division and NIDM. The special address was given by engineer Sanjeev Kumar, director IAHE, Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. Dr. K.M. Soni, former additional director general, Central Public Works Department, took it up a notch higher with the inaugural speech. The honorable panelist, Professor Chandan Ghosh, shared his detailed lecture on infrastructure health gra grading issues and challenges. His presentation highlights were on various stages of building health checkup and mapping, facets of screening and testing, soft measures to avoid large scale damage, role of forensics in damage evolution, infrastructure report card by ASCE, large scale stimulation based on performance checking of buildings. The next honorable panelist, Dr. Bishwajit Bhattacharji, Emeritus Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT, New Delhi, shared his detailed lecture on health checkup of built up concrete structures. His presentation highlights were on health checkup of the built up concrete structures, damage and distress, service life and maintenance repair, exposure zones for service life prediction, our next honorable panelist, Mr. Manish Bharti, CEO, Cortex Construction Solutions Private Limited, shared his detailed lecture on online certification and assessment of building health. His presentation highlights were on structural adequacy and residual life analysis by non-destructive techniques, condition assessment through structural categorization, structural health assessment methods, Corrosion Mechanism, Quick Savo App, Dynamic Load Testing Report. It was an exceptionally informative and a successful start with the three-day online training program.
Today's sub theme is tools and techniques for retrofitting. If you wish to receive an e certificate for attending this training program, kindly register yourself in NIDM's portal. Please visit training.nidm.gov.in. I am pinning this link in the chat box for your convenience. We now introduce our session coordinator, Professor Chandan Ghosh. Mm, I do not need much uh, introduction, just only leave it. Just you have given already yesterday. Okay, okay, sir. <laughs> so, sir, moving forward, would you like to say a few words before we start? Uh, yeah, uh, so today sure. is, uh, uh, is the second day. Of course, we are not uh, counting that first day, second day, third day. The kind of work uh, that we are emphasizing over here in this three days program is to highlight the importance of health mapping of our infrastructures and then taking some kind of or uh, taking some kind of measures that where our experts are, uh, are present as a panelist. Yesterday, uh, thing is how to check the health. And today is uh, three, three eminent persons. Uh, they are uh, the, both uh, Dr. Gopal Rai, and then uh, engineer, architect, or rather he is more of an engineer if we take from my side, uh, that uh, Nitin Verma, uh, who has been uh, doing a lot of, lot of uh, retrofitting work assessment work and then he will present many such case studies and also Dr. Gopal Rai from Bombay, uh, he is also going to present uh, the case studies that they have been dealing with various agency with most, most of the, most of many of the, all the things that they have been doing in the field, they are the really challenging one. And we say that uh, most of, many of the infrastructure uh, because uh, they have been made, whether it is a building or multi-story building, like yesterday we have shown you some of the glimpse of the conditions of uh, NBCC Greenview uh, building uh, that which has been rejected now to not fit for uh, living. Of course, uh, Nitinji is going to give uh, more accounts and details about the status of that building in his presentation today. Uh, but at the same time, the kind of infrastructure or rating of our uh, infrastructure has not yet started uh, nationally or even state-wise, even though before taking up any kind of retrofitting work or repair or retrofitting work, expert advice as well as testing, both destructive and non-destructive testing are being done. In fact, yesterday's lecture by Manish Varthi uh, gave some of those uh, highlights about how to do the test on the live live test on the uh, bridges or buildings, and then how to take the samples and what are the test results and how to interpret that whether the infrastructure is uh, going to survive for another 20 years or 30 years, something like that. And moreover, if another aspect that time to time in our city, like metro cities, especially in Delhi, where it is earthquake prone, there are certain circular notices or even uh, some kind of uh, you know guideline uh, given, and especially about the schools, uh, that uh, a, a order is placed that all the schools in Delhi, they are, they are in thousands, they have to give uh, their structural sufficiency certificate or earthquake safety certificate uh, to the municipal corporation of Delhi or the concerned uh, organ of MCD, uh, even in fact, we have MCD here and DMC, and also we have the LICAN. Of course, CAN part we don't take care uh, uh, normally for the civil uh, aspects, uh, but many of the buildings in the city are being uh, categorized as authorized or unauthorized unauthorized some moment of time being regularized some other time. So the entire burden of those unauthorized construction or living conditions are carried over to the municipal corporation of Delhi. And then time to time code revisions takes place and upgradation of the, we say upgradation, 
or severity of the codal conditions, even new code is going to come that where the kind of earthquake forces that we consider, uh, we take the uh, pseudo dynamic forces in the horizontal direction, they are going to be increased by three, four times. Uh, in that case, how uh, our experts or new uh, building that which are going to come up uh, in the days to come based on that code, uh, we, we, that is a matter of concern for us about the existing building. So today's things, of course, what is going to happen in future about the health of these buildings. So today, uh, in fact, uh, number of cases will be taken up by two experts, especially uh, Dr. Gopal Rai and uh, Mr. Architect Nitin Verma through their various work and project that they have been doing with the government, private, even embassy area, and even railways, and many, many such things are there, which you will see. And of course, there is one uh, presentation in the, will be done on a, in our sector two, NOIDA. Uh, the Ristoflex uh, official building has been made based on base isolation technique. So case studies will be shared. Uh, by uh, Mr. Ratish Jain and his, uh, uh, his uh, staff, uh, the Saurabh Ghosh, in place of him, if he's busy at that time. So we'll see that a real case study today as a part of, you know, uh, tools and technique for retrofitting by three, this, by three of these eminent experts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we would like to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Nitin S. Verma. Mr. Nitin S. Verma is the managing partner, Aadhaar Consultancy and Infrastructure. He has previously worked as senior manager for SEEDS and as general manager technical for Aadhaar Consultancy and Infrastructure. He has been serving as the director general manager for ACI since 2012. Over to you, sir. Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, okay. I am basically a trained architect. I trained as an architect in 2000, passed out as an architect, but I've been functioning as an engineer. It's a big dilemma, but I mean, that's how it has been. My background um, has been from the disasters. I've been a consultant to United Nations for 12 years. And over the period of that, in those 12 years, I have attended to just about every single natural calamity that has struck India. Uh, right from Odisha super cyclone in 1999 to Gujarat earthquake in 2001 to Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004, and the numerous of the floods, whether it was in Barmer, Rajasthan floods, whether it was Kosi River floods or Assam River floods and so on. And then Sikkim earthquake was the last one which I attended from as a consultant to uh, under the guidance of Dr. Ghosh as well at some point of time. And with the NDMA and all these agencies, based on that, I mean, based on my experience, obviously United Nations at some time sponsored me for a study to Japan for the earthquake techniques. And I've been working as a retrofitting expert thereafter. In 2012, uh, 2012, I started this company after one of a senior members in the industry suggested that if you have to work for retrofitting, then you should not be waiting for disasters to happen. Then you should be a person who should take the charge and retrofit the buildings right before a destruction is struck in a building. And obviously understanding that government of India and all these human ecosystems, they get activated only after a disaster. For them, there is nothing called as prevention. I mean, at least I couldn't find any tool or a mode or a vehicle which probably takes care of a prevention. I mean, there are agencies, but for them, prevention from a disaster is probably one of the last things. I mean, that's how this industry works. You All of you know better things better than me. So to counter that uh, one, one statement, probably I had to start our consultancy and infrastructure. Initially we were consultants, but soon we realized probably only being a consultant doesn't help in this industry unless until you demonstrate what you, what you mean and what you do. 
So Adhaar Consultancy and Infrastructure is a leading retrofitting company uh, operating out of Noida. And we have done a lot of projects. We have done a lot of projects. Probably I can give you a glimpse about them. And we have taken a lot of things out of them. I mean, ACI is a only partner to Delhi Metro for their rehabilitation and the repair jobs. ACI has done a lot of projects with a lot of embassies across Delhi. We have done for the, we have worked for the high rise buildings. We have worked for factories. We have worked for hospitals. We have done for schools. We have, I mean, any and every probably project nowadays we get referred to. We certainly get referred to. So, I mean, it's been a journey. We have learned a lot. It's been a practice. I'll just show you some glimpses of our work. Probably we can refer to. I mean, I'll try to show you the range of projects that we have done in the last 10 years. And probably that may help you uh, to understand that every single structural problem can be attended to. It can be corrected. It can be strengthened. And the life of the building can be enhanced with small and very small interventions. There's no need to demolish anything and everything. If a strengthening and a retrofitting process is designed well and executed well, the life of a building can be enhanced by in a fraction of a price of a new construction. So uh, if you allow me, I can share my screen with you. Yeah, please. Huh. Yeah. There is a share okay. screen is there. Okay. In between, I would like to say that, uh, yeah, engineer is not defined by the engineering degree that uh, we get uh, uh, through the corridors of uh, our technical institute, so-called, uh, but it is defined by the experience that you gather. So that way, uh, uh, let us uh, not take you as uh, like that you have overpowered engineering sense or underpowered your architectural scheme. It is a combination of all these things makes a, a human being and that which uh, is very much true to you that you are dealing with, with the uh, reconditioning of the very building true. and other things. Very true. So uh, yeah. to introduce this, we are a small structural and seismic retrofitting experts. Uh, we operate out of Noida, uh, Sector 10, and we have partnered many companies on, all across to learn and obviously, so, I mean, none of the ones on the left hand side is, I mean, uh, none of you are not aware of any of these. We are a cutting edge technology company. We now comprise of 28 to 29 engineers. We work out and we do an assessment and we also do an execution at this stage. Uh, this, is, this was the first disaster that ACI uh, responded to. This, is, this one is a high-rise building in Nepal, based in Nepal. Uh, it's, a, I mean, it's a common building. They, have, they had two high-rise projects which were destructed heavily during the 2015 earthquakes. And I mean, all of us are aware that the 2015 earthquake strike was a dual strike in Nepal. I mean, there was a, a primary earthquake initially, which was some seven point something on the reactor, reactor scale, but it also had an aftershock, which was of an equal strength, almost equal strength. So uh, the construction scenario in Nepal obviously is not very different to what we see all around ourselves in Delhi and Sion and the joining of maybe Mumbai. I'm not very much aware of the Mumbai market. But uh, at least in the northern India, it's prime. It's very similar to what we have seen in Nepal. Uh, in fact, people from India go over there. I mean, the expertise from India is shared in Nepal. And this is one image which I often portray to people. If it can if it can happen in Nepal, it can happen in Delhi as well. It's not very difficult. I mean, Delhi obviously. When I refer to Delhi as Delhi, I mean it's a NCR in the entire range. These ones come from the Sikkim earthquake, 20, uh, 2012 Sikkim earthquake, which was September. Uh, typical sign of a buckling. This is more of a uh, kind of a project which probably we see in unauthorized colonies in Delhi. But this particular image comes from Sikkim again. 
again from second look at the reinforcements on the left hand side on the image number 1 and this condition of the stirrups in the image number 2 so this comes back from gujarat a soft story collapse uh, a soft story collapse could be anyone anywhere but obviously a lot of things which we refer to and dr ghosh will also explain again and again the stilted parkings and the areas and the way it has been designed and constructed before 2005 amendments of the national building codes I mean, if I have to say, particularly uh, the entire Dwarka region needs to be looked into something. Uh, from second, the image number two shows the shear of damage of a column on the left, uh, image number two. Going back to Nepal, uh, in the image number one, it's more of a non-structural damage, but on the image number two, if you can see on the upper floor, the second floor, the shear off of the beam from the uh, junction itself altogether. And this is how Delhi stands, the microzonation plan of the Delhi, which reads how the soils are and how they are expected to behave in case a major strike of an earthquake is to happen in Delhi. So coming to the main point, I mean, since my experience has been from the disasters and my experience and my knowledge and I mean, the way I have seen these disasters very closely, my entire outlook to the building industry changes immediately. I am not worried what is being designed, but I'm also at the same time, I'm more worried about the fact how it is going to be to going to behave when it is actually going to be tested. Since I have seen destruction very closely, I mean, my UN stint gave me an opportunity. I mean, obviously being a first responder to the disasters from government of India side and UN side. I mean, I work very closely with Dr. Ghosh, obviously. Dr. Ghosh has been there in most of these disasters. But I mean, every time he would visit, we, I had been over there much before that. So uh, perspective of the industry changes when you know how destruction is going to strike and what is destruction going to happen. So I will now explain you my perspective on the, uh, on the weaknesses that we keep identifying in the construction. Most of our examples are from Delhi because that's where, that's what is our area of operations largely. I'll take you to the infrastructure as well. I'll take you to the build, building scape, first through the building scape and then through the infrastructure, even the Delhi Metro lines and all everything. Uh, so should I take questions now or should we can keep, uh, I can keep going and probably can answer the questions later. So we'll take up the questions at the end. Okay, so yes, shall sir. I continue? Yes, sir, please. Uh, okay. Obviously, the reasons for poor performance of the RC frame buildings is, I mean, I am no one to do all this. I mean, obviously, all of you understand the, I mean, it's an inadequate design or a substandard quality of construction or a long period effect, a soft story. Even the soil conditions make an impact onto that. So all of these five points are the crux of the entire discussion. Uh, the way to judge is obviously this would easily peeled. I mean, the visual inspection is the first easiest one and it is followed by the study of the drawings and the soil investigation conducted analysis on a STAD or a TETA model designing the rehabilitation scheme. That's all. But now what I need to tell you is, is the distress. Retrofitting or a performance of a building begins with the identification of the, of the kind of distress. Why is it important? Obviously, it is important to understand that an earthquake forces are absolutely equal at every single node and every single part of the building. But what gets damaged is the one, is the part or a node or a section which is not strong enough to take that thing. And noted, noted signs of distress is the first problem. If you have a distress, if you have a notings on the signs of distress, even the most sound design can fail. So 
recording obviously strengthening and all those things it begins with your visual uh, analysis only and once you i have identified the weaker links obviously those needs to be corrected immediately so in this particular case what you are looking at is the problem of the corrosion where the corrosion has led to an extent that the reinforcement has uh, expanded the expansion of the reinforcement size with due to corro uh, corrosion leads to cracks and these cracks obviously in like whether it's image number 1 or image number 2 these are vertical in line very easily identifiable method to do it is remove that break the concrete whatever sound clear this reinforcement do your treatment for the corrosion go ahead in case you need to add or supplement the reinforcement supplement the reinforcement but you what you need is to pack it back with the same strength which is there in the image number 2 so i mean effectively you have identified that the corrosion is your da uh, damaging part and that corroded thing needs to be immediately covered obviously simply re simple reason corrosion happens when the combination of there is a seepage and there is a air contact so jacketing helps in that case now this particular i mean it's a very simply said but then the same thing is jacketing has got different there are many types of jacketing and each kind of a jacketing has its own pros and uh, own cons i mean you can do jacketing with means of concrete very easily very simply the same method could put the reinforcements back make a reinfo uh, package Make a shattering and pour the concrete into it. Damaging part to that is obviously concrete additional pouring will reduce will in, uh, will consume your uh, surface area the, uh, the the floor area. So your column becomes thicker. Your usable floor area gets diminished. Advantage cost. It can be done very cheaply. At the same time, you are losing on the floor area cost. so your thicker bus be a disadvantage so now how to cut the disadvantage of the concrete jacketing or get let's get a section which is thinner the thinner thing you have to have more of a a, a product which is more uh, impervious which doesn't allow which gives which is higher on the m, uh, m value and probably you can jacket it now by let's say say micro concrete so your section still gets enhanced but not that much jitna concrete jacketing mein chahiye so that's an advantage at least some of it i mean you retain the advantages of the uh, concrete jacketing but you uh, somehow minimize or i will reduce the disadvantages but another disadvantage gets added and that's now is the higher cost value so going ahead these two things but obviously advantage with this uh, process of jacketing is you can use it anywhere i mean jacketing only for corrosion or repairs rehabilitation is possible but the jacketing again for the extension of the load or a or a criteria where probably your design has been has been in short form i mean you can enhance the reinforcement which probably might not have been there in the first place altogether so jacketing can help you with either way you can change you can even change the shape of the column you have already casted this particular example comes from ara chapra bridge we did this for uh, i mean under construction bridge uh, this was i guess in 2014 or 2015 this would be the this was the outcome of that so you don't need to demolish anything whatever any even a design correction can be done by means of jacketing obviously in this case it has been managed you can change your shape of anything i mean even your towers obviously the number of the towers i mean all of us are going through a phase in delhi at least ncr way probably far is being manip manipulated altogether i mean there is a change in far in almost every part of the delhi at this moment and the commercial and the things so the uh, uh, things begin oh you have to have you can add more flows let's make more money out of it obviously you can do that but then then that needs to be after taking care of the existing column structure the frame structure and that you have a frame for an initial load or an initial design 
but with the additional load coming in with the additional uh, flows being added obviously it needs to be jacketed and it needs to be strengthened right from the foundation level similar exercises can be done for the beams there is no problem with it the reinforcement corrosion can be taken care of at the same time we design things and all the problem the section uh, section enhancement by means of a concrete can be done for the jacketing by means of jacketing for the beams as well it's not limited to a column part only you do a vertical member but can be done for the uh, horizontal members as well and your heat design problem with the entire grid all together can be taken care of i mean if you can see there is a column uh, steel column which has been introduced as a uh, is a but then that's a problem with the section has been designed on undersize which creates cracks and all those things which are visible in the black one so that can be corrected by means of jacketing second way to do it is that obviously uh, in the beams as well at least you can introduce you can reduce the span by uh, you can reduce the span between the secondary beams or the primary beams or whichever way. so if you can reduce the span obviously the load onto the slab area reduces and the buckling and the change it becomes it becomes fine to be, uh, deal with it if there case and any sagging or anything is noted at any place add another member in this particular case steel has been used because the advantage with the steel is it's very quick to be done but the same uh, process can actually by, be done by means of insertion of a concrete beam as well we are at doing that at the moment with the modern school in barakhamba road where the spans are being reduced by means of concrete jack, uh, insertion of a concrete beam in between the slabs same can be done in the outer walls of the beams as well but now the jacketing again i mean you have done concrete jacketing you have done micro concrete jacketing but at the same time the jacketing and probably at a localized level i mean if if a, a shear reinforcement is uh, on something uh, of a concern then probably you can do that instead of doing on a reinforcement part even the steel plates can for that steel plates can be done from an exterior it's a much neater job with much easier cost effective it doesn't change the uh, size of the construction and it still adds up to the steel value which is deficient in the entire procedure slabs very common things wahan chhat gir gayi yahan ye chhat gir gayi i mean the paradiso chintal par paradiso all of us are looking at i mean this particular images comes from the dwarka side corrosion is at speak the um, chlorides sulfate contents on a higher side carbonation has already crossed the uh, uh, the cover note cover itself is deficient and the end is this the soffit of the slab collapses the moment the soffit of a slab collapses or the cover concrete collapses there is a mayhem or oh chhat gir gayi oh chhat gir gayi so actually go back and have a look chhat nahi giri hai it is just the cover concrete and effectively that is the problem so whatever is the problem that needs to be fixed you can't demolish a roof altogether oh wo to chhat gir gayi wo to kamzor ho gayi sir it's only cover concrete which is gone effectively what we are trying to understand is ki agar pehle hi cover concrete kam tha aur corrosion ho gayi to sabse pehle weakest part hi girega solution add more reinforcement to it and add the cover concrete beneath it simple done the problem is simple saying the problem is ki where does the reinforcement fix the reinforcements get fixed onto the four beams which are surrounding that part and you still can do that But the beams if you are deficient the beams with the concrete jacketing doesn't work you can't do the steel plating and this you can't do this uh, reinforcements it's not a location you can go back to this other part to the uh, jacketing by means of steel plate all together for the newest products of the carbon fiber and the glass fibers which are much more easy to do can be done very simply in an in indoor conditions just plaster them just paste them and they are above obviously effectively what we are doing is is the section enhancement but in this case the section gets marginally enhanced by virtue of a newer products carbon laminates 
Our laminates is more of an external reinforcement. Slabs are sagging, whatever. Deficiency should be calculated onto the steel. Deficiency of the steel should be calculated. And once that is ascertained by means of a, uh, analysis, add that much part of a carbon laminate from the exterior. Much cleaner, much superior job. Cost of a product is on a higher side, but understand what you save is all onto the additional cost. आप उसको तोड़ के रीइनफोर्समेंट लगाते हैं दीवारें गंदी होती हैं दीवारों के दोबारा उसके पास सफाई होता दैट मच दैट एरिया गेट्स लॉक्ड अप फॉर दैट मच लॉन्ग पीरियड वन मंथ टू मंथ्स उसकी नीचे से कंक्रीटिंग हुई है गनाइटिंग हुई है व्हाट एवर उसकी क्योरिंग एंड थिंग्स एवरीथिंग कॉस्ट रिड्यूसेस टू जीरो ऑल यू नीड इज अ मटेरियल व्हिच इज पेस्टेड व्हिच शुड बी कैलकुलेटेड वेरी वेल एंड योर कैलकुलेशंस विल सपोर्ट यू once you have got a better analysis done for that we have done similar works for delhi metro now this particular case i would wish to refer in detail slightly i mean delhi metro i mean many of you would be aware uh, had a very bad uh, was affected at this is this one is particularly at kalindi kunj and uh, kalindi kunj there is a illegal furniture market close by Uh, which caught fire one fine day this was 2019 in the uh, in the v hours at around 3:30 or 4 am in the morning and the initially the fire wasn't much but uh, soon since it was a illegal market and all the problems of the wood and other things and whatever was there uh, it was it was blown out of control it was blown out of a control that to an extent the wire duct of the metro line got suffered the two columns which you are see are looking at the one on the extreme left hand side is a is the original size and the column number 2 from the left and then the column number 3 from the right were also damaged in the fire so was the wire duct from one end beginning at the left hand side till the far end but uh, aci was approached immediately by dmrc at that time and they wanted to ascertain how much damage has happened and after initial investigations we were very clear that the surface of the concrete was uh, damaged and the fire had not reached the steel part at all so they asked for a remedy we gave them a remedy uh, for a product or the carbon fiber uh, wraps for which uh, dmrc has got no uh, details i mean dmrc doesn't recognize it as a product and dmrc has got no codes under any construction or plans and things and they said ki no it can't be done we don't know this product you give us a method where probably only we can work either with micro concrete or concrete we said okay for the concrete part if you're so uh, bent upon it's okay you can design it with the concrete for the columns part but for the wire duct we would still wish you to look at the newer products and obviously if they are not there in the codes and the uh, construction manuals we probably can help you get to that level it took some doing but i was able to convince the highest management and this project had been completed we were given very stringent rules to deal with obviously uh, the loads um, there had to be a pre uh, pre doing of this uh, uh, load test had to be done benchmarks were to be followed i mean entire delhi metro was looking towards us then we uh, did the repairs which was initially done at the cost of aci and the load tests were done and then the results of the load tests were satisfactory that we were done and obviously then it was converted into a project now i have been told that a delhi metro has started doing uh, training sessions on these products for which also i have been called for and we have communicated so obviously technology is always available but proving that technology right to the right people it takes some doing it generally takes some doing but it's a very simple way if it comes to building industry back i mean it's very very easily done i mean you do it and you plaster it and you finish it off it's hardly visible to anyone matlab not many people can actually judge that there is anything done with the thing then jacketing itself can be done for different form we have done with the uh, gunniting as well 
instead the reinforcement addition was not has never been a, a concern uh, the structure is very well protected but obviously the outer surfaces as you are, as it's visible in this case is not uh, to up to the mark so obviously then that gets corrected with the jacketing and obviously it's more of a rehabilitation scheme rather than a strengthening scheme over here that's again i think again this again is a factory building which got fire which got fire and i had a heavy damage obviously this the strengthening over here has been done by means of gunniting gunniting obviously instead of pouring a concrete we are throwing it with power and it gets started so it's the same technologies which are very easily available but we are using them in a i mean the choice of the technology becomes an uh, becomes an exercise in this, in, in retrofitting actually we have done aci i mean aci has done i mean uh, construction of support structures where probably we cannot help the existing structure i mean so far whatever experiences you saw were primarily for the buildings where probably uh, we were dealing with the existing structure but certain locations we also have to provide a support structure exterior i mean this comes from embassy of switzerland where we the task given to us by the government of switzerland was to tie the whole embassy building with the bedrock so they wanted a seismic guarantee and the only methodology that was uh, that was narrated to the embassy by the swiss departments of engineering was that to tie the whole switzerland embassy to the bedrock now bed if you are uh, i mean many of you who are from delhi would understand these embassy area in delhi is in chanakyapuri which also is a part of a ridge and the in the ridge the bedrock is uh, at places it's very shallow and at places it's very deep so we asked for a, uh, when we were approached when aci was approached uh, they had asked us ki uh, you tell us how would you tie it up with the, the bedrock and my answer was simply sir give me a soil report the moment you give me a soil report i'll be able to tell you how we should be going about it and the and they said we don't have a soil report together uh, but our consultants in back in switzerland have asked us to do this exercise and they have said ki either it can be done by means of piles or you can do it by uh, micro piles or whatever whatever you have to suggest to I said, "I said, we would not design anything for you. Leave alone, execute it." I said, "Ki." They said, "Ki, come back with us and probably." We did attempt a uh, wanted to attempt for a soil report, and the engineers again came back. Oh, we don't have that time. The uh, there's a visit by certain officials from the Switzerland in November so and so year, and the embassy has to be absolutely fine. You have got as many as seventy two days to do that for the entire building. this is what we came up instead of doing any pile micro pile or whatever we actually did the ex excavation and we found out probably we can work with the anchors we can work with the rock anchors and based on that rock anchors executed the rock anchors made up the foundations designed the foundations and got the tier walls constructed in a actually working embassy that helped tying the entire building the existing building of the embassy tied to the bedrock and this one particular project really helped me i mean i was facilitated by the ambassador of switzerland after this project and they came up and said we didn't know that there's such techniques and such expertise is available in india we always were bent upon probably will have to call our teams from switzerland to get this thing done who actually had visited and were clueless how to get these things rock anchors is in a technology which is used for different purposes and things but we used it for tying the foundation of the building to the bedrock and it's now is a seismically safe building in india at least and that's what they wanted we have done similar things for such an uh, embassy of sweden it's a reception building uh, rear side of the reception building of the ambassador of sweden and uh, they called us for that again the analysis was done by iit delhi and iit delhi realized that there is a cavity wall in between so nathan how would you wish to work? if it's a, if there is a cavity wall available then it's the easiest way let's fill that cavity with a shear wall and get the answers done and this is what it is 
Mm-hmm. Done in the same things in high rise. I mean, the balconies where the cantilever beams and all those things are a problem. Extend a thing without going into a FIR problem. Get the analysis. Get a steel column out. Get a steel column out and support the beams, and you don't lose anything. Neither the space nor with the uh, you don't have to go and fight the authorities about anything. Thing, and you still get your uh, desired results. Again, rock anchors in. Uh, function this is uh, ims school in dehradun the school had been constructed on a retention wall the retention walls design was counter fort wall and the counter fort wall ka construction mein the contractor had been very smart he reversed the reinforcements while the main reinforcement has to be on to the inner side and a counter fort the main re- reinforcement in this particular case was on the outside the job in the hand of the management was to demolish the entire retention wall so that and the obviously the cost apart from the cost there was a risk if there is a rain during that process of the demolition of the uh, retention wall there will be a direct danger to the entire school like enter aci and we said keep let's not demolish anything let's strengthen it if the problem is the reinforcement then the problem is the reinforcement needs to be corrected we did the anchors if you can see the anchors uh, can i run my cursor is it is my running of the cursor is visible on the screen yes sir it is visible so if you see these reinforcements these reinforcements have been drilled into the wall to enhance the function of the counter fort and once these anchors are there obviously these are being now being st- st- supported by the velo beams which are running beneath to support it so the construction cost demolishing and a construction cost of a 170 meter long wall gets completed in a fraction of the cost that's drilling in process anchoring in process if you can see my cursor running that's a 32 mm bar which is being now coming at so it has been inserted into the wall to enhance the function of the counter fort itself the same technologies then we used in d again for soil strengthening and to retain i mean obviously with the uh, drill pipes and things the sheet piling things both image 1 and 2 this probably mr shah would be able to give you uh, we are in touch with him for a project nowadays in school where we have now i mean after strengthening the school by means of the, all the distress and the concrete members we are working with the tailor devices at this moment to do a uh, to do the uh, execution of the dampers viscous uh, viscous dampers again that would be the only school building in delhi that would be earthquake proof if i if i can say mr shah is a part to that project uh, do i have time or have i eaten in the some other presentations i can go on and on i mean i've got a list of projects that i can support it's sir actually it's time now for the next presentation if you can do it in a short file it's okay but uh, we need to move forward Okay, I'll just quickly run through this. These, yeah. so, I mean, the minor repairs, obviously epoxy injections. I mean, very simple. Then these epoxy injection any level, the soil strengthening by means of injections and the cement injections, demolition. Again, there are done needs to be done in a very controlled manner and at very selective places. That's the strengthening. I mean, now that's an engine. Uh, i mean a seismically safe uh, strengthening of non engineered buildings uh, this is shimla where we were we have been adding uh, the bands the uh, seismic bands uh, both horizontal and vertical by on a brickwork and if i can show you a detail i mean in the image number 1 on the top if you can see on to the left hand side top corner you can see we have added reinforcement on the exterior side on the image number 2 in the same the two reinforcements have been bound in the image number 3 on the left hand side bottom you can see a brick wall being converted to a shear wall and on the image number 4 a brick work now being converted with a column at the corner of it again so the reinforcement additions and the tying is a skill the moment once this is achieved you can just put a shuttering and 
pour concrete to that which ties the entire building effectively bringing in bands wherever necessary like the cement and ACI I started this after working with 13 years for these post disaster recovery uh, for school hospitals and things and i mean the challenge was if you have to work for retrofitting and strengthening then it needs to be done before a strike of an earthquake now we are 10 years old i still remain as a co-founder and managing partner the way i was originally and been doing a lot of things a lot of people have been supporting idm dr ghosh obviously yes has been a part of my journey he has seen us very closely we have learned a lot from him and i just i mean he keeps asking me to share my experiences with all of you why i am here to do that we have worked with the metro agency a mecon bmtpc nhai and government agencies we have done for world bank who embassies of sweden switzerland brazil germany france a lot of them we have worked with corporates coca cola airtel unison so we have done with novotels we have done with coromandel we have done with lot of people apart from that uh, we have worked with uh, real estate I mean, I'm not a very great fan of the real estate. I mean, I was never a part of the real estate boom when it was happening. But we have worked with a lot of them. We have done with Tata Housing. We are currently working with Godrej as well. We have worked work with Saya Galaxy and a lot many of them. We have been largely limited to the Delhi part, uh, Delhi and Sia. We have been. We have got four offices. but we have worked as far as nepal bihar vishakhapatnam goes but we have mostly uh, in delhi in delhi and cia but that's it that's it i think i can answer that thank you sir for your insightful presentation National Institute of Disaster Management and Civil Engineering and Construction Review presents certificate of appreciation to Dr. to Mr. Nitin S. Verma during the for the expert lecture on tools and techniques for retrofitting structures during the three days online training program on infrastructure health mapping standards and retrofitting of built up facilities in 2021 to 2022. Now we would like to introduce our next speaker for the day, Dr. Gopal Rai. Dr. Gopal Rai, Director, R and M International. Dr. Rai graduated from IIT Bombay with a PhD in Structural Engineering in the year 2006. He has published over 50 high-quality research papers and has participated in more than 400 national and international conferences. He is the honorable secretary of Indian Institute of Bridge Engineers (IIBE) and general secretary of Association of Structural Rehabilitation and Retrofitting (ASPR) and committee member of National Association of Sales Professionals (SPSS). Indian Institution of Structural Engineering (IISC), Bureau of Indian Standards (BIS), and American Concrete Institute (ACI). He started his entrepreneurial journey in 2010 when he incorporated a specialist engineering and construction venture, the Rendra Group of companies (DGC) that provides a turnkey solution to the industry for structural auditing, retrofitting, and monitoring. Under the leadership of Dr. Gopal Rai, DGC has won multiple awards, and he was also felicitated by URS Media Consulting. private limited and asia one magazine to be among the 40 most influential leaders under 40 in the year 2018 over to you sir yes ma'am can you hear me yes sir thank you very much uh, and thanks to uh, gosh sir for dr gosh for uh, allowing us to talk on the rehabilitation of course it's a, a big journey from iit to industry Uh, usually, uh, uh, a over-qualified person when works like a contractor, it's a very difficult situation. 
but the uh, thing is that uh, as a company as a dgc we managed to do that and today i am i am very specific to how much time ma'am i have ma'am how much time i have 30 minutes 25 okay. minutes okay so let me i think my previous speaker mr verma has already explained a lot of things on the uh, retrofitting and rehabilitation and very good case studies he has covered and it was a lively case study thank you mr verma for uh, sharing that part let me go to the uh, specific to the projects okay because all these methods has been already uh, explained to you only advantage of disadvantage of fiber wrapping and steel plating as things are there with one picture you can understand uh, what is the advantage it is like the minimum uh, people can uh, go with the can you see my slides yes sir yeah. so minimum actually the steel plating you require so much heavy and laminating in the laminating also we have option of precious laminates and non precious laminates in fact uh, being a part of phd from iit bombay during that uh, uh, we have uh, developed a technique of precessing of this carbon laminate in fact in last 12 years we have done 70 bridges in the in the railway nhi and a lot of private bridges also uh, with the precessed carbon laminate let me go to the specific to the case study what we are as a as a bridge engineer as a maintenance this is the problem the bridges which are older in 30 years now are coming for the rehabilitation although we designed for a bridges 30 years back for a 50 years but now major bridges are coming for the aging problem or because of the overloading okay so these are the and the bridges which are uh, the condition which is built in 2006 and 2016 and 2026 lot of overloading and deterioration problems are coming in last 50 years i'm going to one of the case study this is a muzaffarpur bridge which is in uh, bihar this bridge was very important it connects uh, it's like a uh, 100 meter long bridge and it was constructed and a very bad condition was there of the bridge so before we go to the let me show to the photograph of the the case study although we have done a thorough analysis of this and iit yeah this is the condition of the bridge and uh, this is the typical a new bridge okay there was no problem with the contractor let me tell you very upfront there is a no contractor contractor problem was not there the design the bars were so heavily congested that there is no space for a concrete and this bridge after inaugurating or after starting within the 3 month 4 month it has been stopped and because of this bridge the 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 two the two uh, you can say the states were connecting otherwise now they have to travel up to almost uh, 55 km and then come away to the same path so this was very important bridge and this is newly constructed so before we have gone for anything we have just checked and uh, we have complete analysis of this bridge at dex lab we have carried out like fem analysis and we have checked what is the problem and then we found that there was excessive the depth of the concrete the depth of the section was inadequate so what we have done we have chipped off the loose concrete first of all we have done a initial propping to the bridge okay the loose concrete has been removed and then we have uh, put a micro concrete and grouting to the structure and we have built the section and also we have increased the depth of the section by 150 mm so that the concrete should concrete and reinforcement should have a sufficient space and we have poured the micro concrete inside and uh, we have used uh, cfrp carbon laminate precious laminates we have used 100 by 1.4 and two layers of 400 gsm like this you can see the photographs okay all the all the things has been fiber wrap we have done laminate in fact we have while building we have made a haunch in fact in original drawing it was there a haunch but while constructing there a haunch was missing so while casting we have completed loosen the part then we have given a haunch and then we have casted and then at the bottom we have put a precious precious laminate there were almost three precious laminates and we generated almost 30 ton of precious in this uh, carbon laminate and that was the thing to only address that uh, the cell weight of the girder and to make carbon laminate as active so all the three girders were uh, strengthened 
uh, using this pristress, first the jacketing, we have built the section, then pristress laminates, and then the band pristressing. This was the fiber ram, which was again a pristress. So we have uplifted, almost there was a major settlement to the structure. So we have uplifted, and then we have done a load test also. In fact, in 2020, uh, this is almost a two year old bridge, uh, means two year when we have constructed, and we have heavily loaded the bridge, and we found that earlier the permissible deflection was going uh, beyond the limit of the bridge, almost 60-70%. But after strengthening and processing, what we found, it is within the permissible as per the IRC norms. And the bridge was opened in somewhere around September 2020. Until the, this is uh, the second year, uh, there is absolutely no cracks and nothing will be there. This is Muzaffar Pusa and Samistipura Road. Okay, this was tested part. And there was absolutely no problem with the, the cell weight, what we imparted. And uh, during the construction only, we have taken 15 days uh, to do the rehabilitation of this bridge. And on 16th day, 17th day, we have done a testing. In fact, all the instrumentation, uh, and we have followed all the IRC special 30, 37, all the norms and the minimum recovery uh, uh, things. And it was loaded heavily with the trucks as per the, as per the class AA bridge and it has been reported and then we have started part. This was one of the case study of the bridge. Now let me go to the, what is as our title of the, the, the conference and webinar says, the monitoring. In fact, first time in last 12 years, I have I've seen the advantage of uh, monitoring and live monitoring. This was the Prabhat Dairy at Nasik. This is a huge building and a huge uh, milk production units are there and they do the processing of milk and they have a skeleton like steel, uh, the concrete structures. One of the audit, one of the structural consultant who has done audit, I don't want to take the name. In fact, two people were there and they have simply seen the structure and they have given uh, done the analysis and then come, uh, they simply say that uh, this is the rehabilitation scheme and the client has to spend 20 crore rupees on the rehabilitation. So when I, I personally, when I visited Nasik, this plant, and I see that there was, uh, as this is industrial building, so we cannot compare it completely with like a residential or commercial building. So it is a complete uh, a frame structure. So what we have checked, apart from doing analysis, we have put the sensors, the natural frequency, we have the, the deflection sensor, the strain elongation sensors, you can see all this. Uh, this is the wireless sensors we have put. And we were trying to find out during the, uh, when, when the plant is running, which is the area which is weaker and showing the, the difference in the natural frequency of the structure. In fact, we have, uh, we have not, uh, in fact, some impact, impact we have done during the uh, natural frequency recording and all. And after that, we have seen that the, 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 what frequency the structure is. And then we are trying to make all the corner up to that so that we can give additional stiffness and uh, we can impart the retrofitting scheme. So these are the sensors we have installed and we have taken the help of Novis, one of the Singapore company who supplies the uh, instrumentation to us. And Dr. Prashant Motwani was involved uh, from, from Singapore uh, for uh, doing this project. And they, we have put the sensors in our locations. And then what we found out of 100% of the building, only uh, one third or 40% of the building was badly distressed. Otherwise, the whole building was intact. And then we have given a scheme of rehabilitation for that structure. Like you can see that there was a wireless sensor. In fact, we have monitored for more than 15 days in a running plant where, where the zone is poor and where the zone is bad. So this is the a complete setup. The side we put a sensor, we have a server, and then we take the data from the server to the our where you're in office or you're in resident, you take all the data and you can run the data, you can see the data and 100 hours, non-stop continuous, uninterrupted monitoring system we have done with the help of Novis, okay, the sensor system. And we saved almost when it, the project cost was 20 crore. And after this, we have given a rehabilitation scheme for less than five to six crore rupees. Okay, so this is the benefit. This is what uh, the inflometer, then 3D accelerometer, the strain sensor, the gateway, and the crack meter is all at different locations we have put so that we can actually analyze 
where the distress and how the frame structure is behaving. In fact, we have put the tiltometer whether there is a deflection or there is a twist in the uh, the frame structure or not. So all these sensors we have rigorously for uh, almost 15 days, and we have taken all the data, and then finally we have put into the uh, the model, and then we have analyzed the structure, and by that we have done a deficiency analysis, and that was there. And actually, when we have improved that part, the building having so this is one of the very good uh, way of doing like all, all the all the vibrations, and you can see the actual location where we have put, and we were trying to do a different location so that we can get maximum data and we can incorporate in the results. So these are the results we have put and then we have uh, analyzed. So this is the advantage of monitoring. In fact, uh, I've seen that a lot of people only do that uh, non destructive test and all. Now the time has came that such a complicated structure where the machinery are kept here and there and there was there is a vibration and there is an impact on the machines and all. So normally your uh, entity test will not give the health of the structure. We have to really rigorously we have to check what is the behavior of a member. Now we have to go one step up uh, from entity to the monitoring of the structure and really finding out the the, the cause of distress. So here also we, we we find out with the sensors there was some uh, geometry uh, deficiency in the structure and because of that it was causing that and we rectified and we saved a lot of money out of that. Now the third project, uh, there is a Netherlands house in Mumbai, which is 50 year old structure. In fact, the, the, in Mumbai, the lot of things like in lockdown and all, a lot of people were like, uh, whether the building has served the life of 50 years, now whether we can enhance the, the life or not. So uh, the consultant was J plus W from uh, Joshi Saab was there. And uh, because of uh, with his guidance, and support okay we we done this structure and we have done the complete jacketing and complete rehabilitation it, it was a first i think uh, india the first flat slab structure has been uh, constructed and this is a purely a commercial building and a lot of this all, all the repair technique like routing and we have removed the plaster we have done uh, grouting and then we have if uh, any, anything is there we have done a repair and proper jacketing has been carried out what i think mr verma has explained the complete treatment okay the jacking of the building was very important so that we from foundation we have done the micro marking at the critical locations we have carried out and almost in eight or nine months okay then uh, this is the actual area where the the flat slab and the 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 the, the cap is there the slab cap is there and this is what we have done a rehabilitation with the fiber wrap and all so the columns has been rehabilitated uh, the outer column has been rehabilitated using jacketing and the inner column where the officer's space are there we have gone for a fiber wrapping so it is a combination of jacketing and fiber wrapping and the slabs to strengthen with the carbon laminates and we say seven eight months we have completely restored the structure and uh, in fact the cost the client was a little worried. What is the cost of rehabilitation and what will be the warranty of the structure? So we told that after this rehabilitation, you can go for another 15 years, provided every five years you have to do the structure audit. And the cost of rehabilitation was six crore. If they could have gone for a, a redevelopment and all this for the same premises, same space, they could have spent almost 90 or 95 crores. So with a smaller amount, they could have saved the structure and they would have run the part. I think uh, in today's scenario, there are there, there will be a combination of retrofitting and monitoring. So we need to be like whatever we rehabilitation we do, we should monitor so that we can safeguard the, the structures. For a lot of railway bridges and all this we have done, although I'm not presenting because of short of time. Okay, so I think uh, I'm through, sir. Hello. Oh. Thank you, sir, for your insightful presentation. Oh. Thank you, ma'am.
Uh, in fact, it is a really, a really very, very, very work that you take up, and then the service that you provide, and with the authority that you have, uh, and the experience that you have gathered, uh, taking rather you know you know in in health science also there are cancerous things are there you know cancer stage one two three doctors give say that if it is stage one okay there is 80 percent probability that we uh, it will be recuperated but the kind of problem that which you have shown two three examples that you have taken they have gone stage four is the last stage doctors say maybe few months or something but you take these buildings or these case studies that you have shown, they are beyond stage four. Means nothing could have been done for that. But you have shown with the time and with the operations that you have done and rehabilitation that uh, or reinstated the facilities is a marvelous. Thank you very much. National Institute of Disaster Management and Civil Engineering and Construction Review presents Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Gopal Rai for the expert lecture on rehabilitation of infrastructure as nation building during the three days online training program on infrastructure health mapping standards and retrofitting of built up facilities from 23rd to 25th February, 2022. So uh, we'll have question answer, uh, getting many of the questions uh, in the chat box. After this third presentation, if you have time, then we'll take it up for half an hour. Uh, Dr. Rai, if you can uh, make yourself, we'll take it up. Yes, sir. I have, I have a time. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Time. great, great. Take care. An announcement to all participants, if you want to share your thoughts on any of the points raised by our speakers in today's presentation, please raise your hand and we will include you in our panel discussion when we begin. Our next speaker, Mr. Ratish Jain, Managing Director, Resist Clicks Group, unfortunately could not join us today. Mr. Gaurav Ghosh will be presenting in his place. Over to you, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, Gaurav Ji is the person that about the case study that uh, which he's showing. Uh, he has been involved as a civil engineer uh, from Beats Pilani. And he has, and also um, he did his masters. And having a hands-on experience about the Bristoflex uh, building that uh, they have made in sector two Noida. So I hope uh, that uh, he is having a rather, uh, uh, Mr. Ratish Jain, uh, when we contacted him, he says that he's the person that will present uh, better than I am because I'm a mechanical engineer, but he has, himself has been involved in this, so better uh, get Europe to speak on this. So we are directly uh, reaching to the expert that who have got the entire building constructed and the case study that which is going to be shared here for the country. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, there is some issue with my camera, so <laughs> I'll be uh, dark. But I'll uh, share my screen. Okay. Uh, Uh, is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah. yeah yes, visible. sir. Um, so, like, uh, thank you, sir, for the warm introduction. Uh, I'll be basically uh, talking about our showcase building and also uh, my construction and experience in that. Plus, uh, since the topic is about retrofitting, so we'll touch up those aspects also. So, just a very brief introduction about our company. Uh, our name stands for Resisting Forces Flexibly. 
and uh, we have four plants uh, in and around noida uh, we are basically manufacturing shock and vibration mounts base isolation system uh, so now i'll move over to uh, this our greater noida plant so before i begin i just wanted one slide uh, it's like a very uh, formal introduction about base isolation most of you will be well acquainted with this so basically what we do in base isolation is we are uh, uh, decoupling the superstructure from the substructure that's a very crude way of representing this because uh, uh, we are basically not allowing the forces uh, of uh, the earthquake to you know being transmitted into the superstructure we ensure that all the damage and the dissipation is happening at one single isolation level so nothing is actually handed over to the structure to take care if you compare it with a conventional structure there are a lot of uh, differences but the primary difference that you can see from this sketch is that in a conventional building both and if you compare a conventional and a base isolated structure so the input acceleration is same in both the cases but in a conventional building the transmitted acceleration is actually much higher which is not in the case of a base isolated structure so these are the expectations i'm telling you what are we expecting from base isolated structure also the story drifts uh, there are huge story drifts uh, in a conventional building because that is how it is uh, dissipating the earthquake energy but uh, as far as base isolated structures are concerned uh, you expect the structure to be rigid i mean you are not relying on the ductility also there is a uh, lengthening of the time period and uh, as we know from the response spectrum as the time period lengthens the acceleration reduces so to just a small demonstration uh, if you like model the bearings in a building which is basically governed by a torsional mode fundamental torsional mode on the right side so you, you will see how it uh, you know swiftly converts into a purely translational mode so the torsional mode is uh, anyway considered to be very uh, disastrous for all the buildings now i'll uh, come over to our resistor flex uh, showcase building which is set, uh, uh, located in sector 2 noida so i'll go from uh, bottom to the top so i'll uh, just uh, take you through all the aspects that we had and uh, in summarize how what are the benefits that we all also achieved so beginning with the soil excavation so after the soil was excavated uh, first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to check the we wanted to assess the ground capability because um, that is a common thing for both both fixed and uh, base isolated structures so we wanted the we wanted to check the stability of the ground uh, and uh, dr chandan ghosh he himself had uh, had been a part of this so after the uh, ground was checked it was found out that uh, it was not uh, the capacity was not enough so we had um, so we jointly decided that uh, we should do micro piling and uh, to you know increase the bearing capacity so the micro piling was done and the grid systems are marked and according to micro piling was done and we we could have a better bearing capacity which ensured that uh, there is no differential settlement because uh, it is very disastrous for uh, conventional building also but in a base isolated building you cannot just have to i mean differential settlement because uh, as i'll show you in the later pictures uh, that if there is a level difference between two bearings so i mean the whole purpose becomes void so after the foundation was casted uh, the next and the most important part was the bearing installation and leveling uh, like i said before the leveling was very important part uh, all the isolators have to be uh, very carefully uh, measured and i mean their levels have to be very carefully measured 
for their correct functioning and uh, a very strict supervision is required so these pictures are showing you how the bearings were placed so the columns were uh, casted up to the uh, desired height and the pockets were left upon which uh, friction pendulums were put i mean in this pictures are dr vasan nasagar he had, even he had been a part of this project uh, this entire project has been done in collaboration with iit delhi so these pockets were later filled with epoxy grout and uh, you see in these pictures the local contractor since i mean you can uh, you can be there for installation of one bearing or maximum two but if the numbers are huge you you cannot be there for all the uh, bearings so you have to train the local uh, contractors so they are trained how they have to check the levels and how to do the grouting so in this picture you see all the uh, isolators have been placed and uh, i mean this is the next level of of the casting of the superstructure which is done is like in the conventional manner a lot of benefits we obtained uh, the biggest one of which was that we could have shallower beams when i say shallower beams i mean that uh, the beams were designed primarily for gravity loads um, since the earthquake forces had been uh, significantly reduced um, also we could uh, get approval for an additional floor in our structure uh, since we could uh, establish in front of authorities that uh, our structure was uh, much better performing in case of a seismic event uh, this is the final uh, structure that is as of today and uh, i am talking to you from the second floor of this building this building has been equipped with 15 double concave friction pendulum isolators two of them are very uh, a, a little bit special the the color uh, the ones with the blue color so they have a special uh, fuse mechanism uh, so these uh, bearings ensure that if i mean the maximum displacement capability is 105 and 105 approximately 210 212 mm displacement it can allow that is as per zone 4 mce okay and uh, if in case there is a uh, additional requirement or if the di displacement capacity is is exceeded so these fuse bearings will help uh, that the bearings don't you know topple and the structure stays in place so a general question which is asked at this point is that if the bearings are going to exceed the travel capacity uh, how do you feel safe uh, so Uh, the simple answer is that if there is a zone 4 mce uh, earthquake uh, i can at least guarantee that the building will stay in place and the occupants won't die uh, but uh, the the entire neighborhood would be a graveyard by then um, the the pendulum bearings which have been put in this structure so the total displacement capacity is 212 mm uh so far i was showing you the uh, how we constructed the structure from bottom to top we also performed the non linear analysis that is a very important part as far as base isolated structures are concerned and uh, that is actually my duty here uh, i designed the isolation system and uh, i then incorporate this bearings into the structure and uh, uh, i have to check the dynamic response of the building because it changes Uh, significantly and uh, that is how you ensure that uh, the key parameters like uh, like i like i showed you in the beginning uh, i am expecting that the acceleration is not trans not being transmitted how are you going to ascertain that and uh, the there are no failures in any elements right so those things can be ensured only using uh, analytical models um, so this is the etaps file um of our showcase building and isolators are placed at this level and so three different type of analysis are there you can choose which one you want generally if the building is very small uh, of a low height so asc says you cannot you need not do any dynamic analysis but it's always prudent that you do the dynamic analysis so there are three lateral uh, equal lateral force procedure response uh, spectrum and response history so just like our is 1893 part 1 also you have to ensure that the 
the structural elements stay in the elastic range so i'm sure somebody would also talk about uh, how do we how do we check the performance analysis of the structure so generally this is a very uh, basic figure that is uh, that most of you would be knowing that uh, we take based on the reinforcement present in the building uh, we uh, we pre we we know, we know determine the uh, predefined locations uh, expecting which one uh, would have a ductile damage so they based on that either it should be displacement controlled or force controlled depending on that we are defining the hinges and uh, we are putting on the structure uh, next uh, the most important part and most overlooked also uh, is the scaling of ground motions uh, those who know this they would know how difficult it is and how important uh, it is also that you cannot just take a random ground motion and uh, uh, just scale it on e tabs and apply it on your structure most likely it will give you absurd results so scaling was also done uh, ground motions were checked it should match your uh, your locality um, it, it should have the similar kind of distance from the nearest fault line you have to check the uh, energy built up flux areas intensity and all the other parameters and uh, you would get a some curve like this okay so every um, for every time history function uh, you would apply it uh, the 0 degree and 90 degree simultaneously and you would get the curves and you have to find out the srss at each time step and take out the maximum value so for all the ground motions as per as we did it uh, as per as so it tells you seven pairs so for all the seven pairs uh, the srss value was determined and uh, we uh, i mean for x uh, direction y direction and this is the 218 mm this is the total worst deflection that can that can ever happen in the in the bearing so these kind of uh, results and uh, assurance can only be given to you by uh, a proper dynamic analysis uh, once the hinge this is the once uh, a kind of picture that you would get after non linear analysis is performed so these green dots generally tell you that uh, uh, is your structure in the elastic range or not the key takeaways from this non linear analysis that we had was that we we could uh, we ascertain the safety of the base isolation system we could find out what is the final displacement we could check the hysteresis loop of the link elements and the most important part was that the performance objective of the superstructure and the i mean which is ascertained by the state of hinges so it's like it's not like uh, for like in our uh, static analysis or in general uh, terminology we say the building is will work just okay or will not work like it not be okay so it's, it's not no more words so you can crunch down to the actual numbers so you can talk in terms of numbers that whether or not the performance will be uh, adequate or not uh, very much when we talk about base isolation we are always emphasizing on continued functionality right so we we talked about uh, putting bearings between the superstructure and the substructure and we are saying that uh, see the building will be safe now so that is fine the building will be safe because uh, the structure is not dissipating any energy now so there is no damage all the damage is taken up by the friction or by the uh, lateral bearing that uh, the hysteric damping but for a continued functionality there are a lot of other services in the building that you have to design right from the planning stage uh, those are the lift staircase facade flat pipes electrical wires and other mep equipments so i'll use our uh, current office building to show you each one of them so uh, an interesting aspect in our building is that uh, the lift well goes to the basement but it is uh, suspended from the ground floor slab so i mean it is not resting at the bottom so a, some, a one chunk of this wall is in tension uh, it's not a uh, it's not in compression so with the sole in the intention that the entire thing can move together uh, and there is all around a gap left of uh, 212 mm so we don't have to worry about the lift being damaged uh, during an earthquake 
So you see, this is during the now this lift is finished, but this picture was taken during the construction. So all around one uh, gap was left. This is the architectural drawing where the gap was um, uh, shown. And next is the staircase. So it's not very. It was not much difficult uh, since we just uh, maintained some gap between the upper staircase and the lower staircase. So uh, just so that uh, to ensure they don't have any continuity. A 25 millimeter gap was kept. Next are the pipes. These are the fire pipes. In the background, you can see the, the water pipes, sanitation pipes. So all these must be uh, flexibly designed uh, to ensure they can they can have a displacement of uh, uh, you know the additional seismic displacement. Uh, we had tested these pipes. So the pipes that you see in the previous slide, these pipes. They had been tested at our grid and order plant uh, for an overall displacement. The electrical wires, I mean, just one loop, extra loop was left so that uh, they don't get damaged. All the electrical panels in our structure, in our showcase building, they have been, uh, I mean, these are not uh, anything related to isolation, but I mean, even you have to take care of these. Uh, these are very costly electrical panels and they tend to topple the first. And if they fall, uh, the bill which will come will be like uh, 20 times the cost of these numbers. Uh, we have made a, a small animation video of our showcase building, which shows uh, all the, even in the earthquake forces and our bearings in action. Uh, I just, I'll just show it to you. So uh, next, I'll just show you one or two references. Uh, so we had completed a project in uh, Gurgaon, which had uh, 254 of these friction pendulum bearings. So here also the bearings were placed at upper basement. So one problem was that since the bearing were placed at on the top of these columns, there was almost five to six meter tall column. So we were having noticing a lot of displacement below the bearings. So for that, we had uh, introduced a tie beam concept. This is the ETAPS model of the building. And uh, so you see the entire structure below the bearings, we had put these tie beams. So these, these are actually, I'm calling them tie beams, but the forces are like columns. So these are designed for the actual forces, uh, just to maintain the rigidity below the isolation system. Uh, since the topic for today was uh, seismic retrofitting, using base isolation, a seismic retrofitting. So uh, I thought I'll just uh, add a couple of slides that how retrofitting can be done using base isolation. Uh, so for that, so the column is there. Have to cut it, add the jacks, transfer the loads. So that was the like kind of an animation. This is the real life project which was uh, retrofitted using base isolation. The supports are placed. Um, 
in this case the beams are also stressed and uh, see the jacks are placed so we have to go one uh, column at a time you have to ensure that uh, only one column is being uh, cut and that loads are temporarily transferred uh, depends on the kind of column here the diamond wire saw has been used so the cut is completed now so the isolator is now being placed and one by one all the isolators are placed and this is the job almost completed again you have to ensure i mean this is the biggest prerequisite of a base isolated building is that you need to have all around seismic gap so even in our building the calculated displacement of 200 to 220 mm we have to maintain that gap all around and finally the isolator is covered primarily for uh, fire protection and dust so uh, i'll just uh, end my presentation with uh, current challenges uh, that i that i that i feel that should be shared regarding maybe it could be a retrofitting project uh, or a new project uh, so at, at my level see i'm a i'm a very basic uh, structural engineer so uh, <laughs> and please forgive me if my presentation was not proper because i'm not a very regular presenter also uh, but i i just i just want to sh share a couple of challenges that i feel that uh, me as well as uh, most of uh, my structural engineering friends would would be facing if they are venturing into the uh, arena of base isolation or anything let's say damping also so the first is that in any tender which comes out uh, the predefined base isolation system is uh, mandated like or the dissipation mechanism so it's already included so there is uh, no room for any further modification so what i mean by this is that see every structure is different uh, be it a new building or a retrofitting project uh, without knowing the structural system uh, the the load path uh, you know just mentioning it that it's going to be a lateral bearing or a friction pendulum bearing or uh, any type of hysteric friction damping or viscous damping so that is like a clear indication that you are inclined to a particular kind of uh, uh, let's say a, uh, a supplier uh, so that leaves room no room for any further modification uh, some building can be good for uh, damper some can be good for base isolation uh, very tall buildings would need combination of both so unless you give the engineers a chance to uh, present their case it's very difficult uh, for this technology to emerge in our country uh, second is that uh, a lot of people ask, uh, you know, that uh, I'm getting this structure for very cheap. Why should I add your uh, bearings? See, honestly, bearings don't add much of your cost. Okay, uh, it will. It might actually in the in the at the front face level, it might add your cost by let's say five ten percent. But uh, if you if you have a far sighted uh, attitude. Uh, and you know that when an earthquake strikes, uh, as per our as per our IS one eight nine three, we are relying upon the damage. So you might have to evacuate your structure for repairs, and uh, uh, you know uh, the building can be damaged. Uh, so if you compare that uh, those benefits with a base isolated building, uh, if it's done properly, I'm, I'm repeatedly saying if it's done properly, okay, uh, you have to check the structure, the the story drifts. Uh, everything if it's checked properly then you will have the fruits for your investment your structure will be safe uh, the next problem that i have i i feel that a lot of tenders have uh, you know they, they they mandate the isolated properties uh, based on the gravity loads let's say they would tell you that uh, we have a 300 ton load and uh, please give give me a 600 uh, rubber bearing which is absurd okay let's say if you are told a person weighs 80 kgs uh, you know, if he's five feet tall, or if it's a six feet tall, you must know the about the person because for a five feet tall, it's unhealthy, and but for a six feet, it's fine. Uh, so you must know. I'm what I'm saying is that you must uh, be told about the structure, the mechanism, and you should be. We should have the freedom to propose based on the on the structure which has to be either uh, uh, constructed or retrofitted. Let's say uh, if you are adding dampers to your structure. So there are chances that your actual loads might increase, right? And if you have, if you have, nobody has told you that because 
dampers or base isolators okay i'll not just say one thing dampers or base isolators so if i'm only uh, relying on the or focusing on the commercial aspects so i'll not tell you that uh, and i will not assist you in the analysis i will not check with you i'll not i'll do not i'll not do anything more apart from selling you my uh, my isolation mechanism but if if the if the if the uh, component is working fine but there is any deficiency in the uh, in the structure itself earthquake will find out and it will it will kill it because it looks for the weakest spot in your structure so we of course uh, retrofitting using uh, passive vibration isolation techniques is the best uh, uh, best thing to be thought about and it should be really done but uh, uh, only on this uh, note that uh, the design should be properly done both for the isolation system and uh, and the superstructure uh thank you for your attention thank you sir for your wonderful presentation national institute of disaster management and civil engineering and construction review presents certificate of appre appreciation to mr gorav ghosh for the expert lecture on resistorplex building in noida construction and experience sharing during the 3 days online training program on infrastructure health mapping standards and retrofitting of built up facilities from 23rd to 25th february 2022 now we will start with the panel discussion followed by q and a session i request professor chandan ghosh to start with the panel discussion uh, thank you uh, so we had three excellent presentation uh, today uh, with all experts and uh, the last presentation made by uh, gorab uh, ghosh uh, from resistoplex Uh, is a testimony to the uh, to the base isolation pendulum system uh, that which is a showcase building that they have made and regarding that i would say that now uh, we have uh, dr gopal rai here to give the presentation and also uh, mr uh, nitin verma yeah okay Okay. Among us, we are all. We also welcome uh, Engineer Sanjeev Kumar Ji. He is the director of uh, Indian Academy of IU Engineers. In fact, uh, he was uh, here as a special address. He gave a special address yesterday in the during the function, along with uh, Dr. K M Soni, who is a now uh, retired uh, additional director general of CPWD. So Sanjeev Kumar sir, welcome. Today, if you are there, okay. In between, we'd see that uh, some of the or <clears throat> I rather uh, go through some of the questions and uh, the raised by this, uh, taking from the bottom most, like uh, that which you can also see. Can you share the impact of a near? please clarify how the horizontal forces are transferred at base isolation yeah i think all three of you were uh, well experienced about this to give uh, some feedback uh, some kind of response to the question raised by narendra singh shakawat i think gorab yes sir is directly to you <laughs> sir the horizontal forces uh, how they are transferred at base isolation i would rather say that uh, uh, how the how when a ground shakes so it uh, so there a lot of energy is imparted on the structure so the primary function of uh, the isolator devices i mean with their own mechanism they are just absorbing absorbing it so the force deformation loop if you see that they they show that there is a lot of damping so they are we the the ideal scenario is that nothing is to be transferred to the superstructure okay we don't want anything to be transferred to the superstructure uh, but uh, codes don't allow it actually uh, all the, the the entire superstructure has to be designed for a certain value of base shear uh, so asc has that and even uh, is 183 part 6 is also coming up with that uh, so even there you can see if the response reduction factor that you see Uh, so that is uh, kept as two 
so that shows that you're not really relying on the ductility of the structure. Okay. And there are uh, some uh, sheep, uh, there are something like, uh, another question is, can you share the impact of a nearby structure which is not retrofitted to the retrofitted building? Can you share the impact of a nearby structure? I think, uh, huh, Nitinji? <laughs> Sir, I'll answer this. Uh, yes, <laughs> the question is appropriate in terms, uh, in terms of, I mean, the row housing and all those things, in, particularly in Delhi. Yes, you are right. There is a possibility of an impact load onto the retrofitting building uh, from the adjoining structure. But obviously, I mean, uh, that would be the damages would certainly be limited for that impact in case of an earthquake it is going to happen. We have seen that in the case of the Gujarat when we were operating over there. The Many of the strong buildings had to face damages from the adjoining structures. That's right. That's possible. That's certainly possible. Have, uh, like you, you have done both of you, you and uh, Dr. Gopal uh, mm -hmm. Rai, you have done a lot of such projects and which you have shown, yeah. showcased some of them. Yeah. Have you taken care of this thing in some of your uh, projects? So, honestly, I'll have to answer this. If you have to start designing for the impact load from the side base buildings in a residential building or a consideration where the walls are being shared, kind of an arrangement. Obviously, it's not very fair to pass on those financial uh, burdens to yeah. the owner of that particular building. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the easier is to convince your neighbor to get the buildings checked and strengthened accordingly. So that okay. both of these two structures behave independent of each other. It's a valid question. It's certainly a valid question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But these days, you know, things are happening. Now, it is not only earthquake. We have to look after Multi hazards. Yeah. Multi hazards. Very rich. Very rich. Yeah. Dr. Rai? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, in Mumbai, in fact, the project which I have shown, Nirlan, which is very near to the metro. In fact, metro is there digging almost uh, 23, 25 meter down. And uh, because of that, a uh, lot of the structures are getting shaked up. So in, in Mumbai, there is a place called Mahim and Matunga, these places we have done a lot of rehabilitation and we have made, isolated the structure from the metro part to this by making a retaining walls and all, okay, and also isolating the part and monitoring the structure. So it is now, nowadays, because of development in the infrastructure, sudden planning and all. So this is the common problem which is coming and we need to be, uh, before any disaster happen, we need to monitor the things. I think very important is a monitoring settlement we should monitor and we should not leave the subject uh, by saying that uh, it is a uh, cost impact and all. We should address the subject by a small sensors and all. Okay. In fact, in this regard, I would say that even for normal construction, which is in Delhi and in many of the cases, like in an authorized area, like in the, in the before I was in authorized um, irregularized or regularized and so many. In an authorized area yeah. uh, uh, in, in Delhi, like South Delhi or wherever, when permission given for construction based on the plan submitted, and then what happened that uh, they have the provision for uh, parking at the basement or at the steel level so that one can go uh, uh, 2.5 meter extra. Normally it is permitted uh, three, four story, but if one is having steel parking, then one can go another two, 2.5 meter extra. But before, when they started the foundation, and then what happened, this level difference and load transfer, there are many cases that when they excavate fully 100% of the uh, own area, uh, then a nearby building on both sides, or sometime in the all the three sides, excluding the front side, if uh, there should be some road provisions are there according to the, uh, say, before passing the uh, plan. So even in many cases, they excavate 100% when all the three sites, critical cases, already buildings are there at different level, having basement, not having basement, having, so in that case, when they excavate one floor extra uh, as per uh, sanctioned plan, then there are such kind of problems comes up 
and which is not taken up uh, in an engineered way. And many of the cases goes for litigation, infighting, and exchange of many other kinds of, you know, things for the damage or for the favor that people take care of. So in that case, uh, now the thing is the load share and other things, uh, which yes, uh, in many cases they can be calculated. Uh, but in such cases where sanction plans are there and constructions are taking care, uh, constructions taking care of very critical conditions about the level of the B side means on the left side, right side, or uh, or in the uh, in the back side. Uh, then many such uh, field problem arise. I think you may be having many experience, both of you. I have seen many such things, of course. Uh, so in that case, what they do, they do some compensate to each other. Sometimes litigation goes on, they don't allow. And sometimes, you know, muscle power goes on where engineering and our calculation uh, uh, or analysis uh, has very, very little way to crept in into such kind of uh, things on a sanctioned plan. And sanctioned plan, not the uh, design or not the uh, structural drawing, which has not yet taken any shape into passing of the building plan. What is your other experience, especially Delhi Metro, a lot of experience are there. Nathan, lot of it, lot of it, sir. Lot of it. Uh, Siddharth and Clay, something happened like that, you know, exactly. years back. Yeah. Siddharth and Clay, yeah. well, they are doing so, joining one draft tube, uh, one line with another, another tunnel with another tunnel. Then all mm -hmm. the buildings, Siddharth and Clay, that uh, they, they got mm -hmm. some kind of uh, settlement and other thing, and lot of uh, whatever is going on in Gurgaon. Uh, it was small area that it was taken care of. Yeah. Of course, Metro Rail took care of that aspect uh, mm -hmm. by grouting and uh, anything yeah. are there. So that's very right. I mean, the monitoring is an aspect which needs to be addressed in a, at a larger scale in our country. Uh, I mean, I remember we were uh, the agency when this uh, Delhi Metro was being, uh, tunnels were being dug beneath the uh, old Delhi. And we were given a work to monitor the structures of the above. And at the end of the day, uh, Delhi Metro ended up losing a lot of money because just about every other family found it as an opportunity to bring in whatever the small plaster cracks or the plaster yeah. chipping and other thing uh, because of a reason of the Delhi Metro being dug 16 meters be beneath their foundation. So, I mean, yes, that is the irony of our country. But Tiga, let's, I, I guess we should move on to the other topic. Let's not get into this. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's get to the better part. Let's okay. Let's get to the better part. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we know this thing. How, uh, one question is, uh, uh, are there any base isolation system for zone five hilly region residential load bearing building construction retrofitting? It is a question by Rajneet Rawat. In fact, uh, I would like to say that, uh, yes, there is, it, whenever earthquake zone is there, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is zone five or zone four, we generally prefer in zone five, zone four, which are critical. Mm -hmm. And base isolated fitting, in fact, IIT uh, Gohati has developed a base isolation system and they have made number of such applications of that, even in Arunachal and Gohati. And even there are some live, I think Dr. Gopal Rai must be knowing about that. Uh, their structural engineering group uh, that uh, in uh, IIT Guwahati, uh, they have made many showcase building also in the north, uh, in that part. So yeah, as far as professor technology Dave. is concerned, professor. yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Professor Dave is there who look after the health monitoring part. In fact, uh, they have built G plus three structure, okay, yeah. a frame structure. And it is almost nine years back. And that structure has been kept on base isolation. And almost uh, two earthquake has came uh, up to a Richter scale of 4.7 and 5.2. And that structure has been never subjected to uh, any, any kind of distress and all. A live earthquake has been came. And uh, that complete frame structure is as it is what is. And now nowadays, they have started with the carbon fiber wrap base isolators. So now it is gone into the new era of 
composite base, composite base isolators. So a lot of research has been done by Professor Dey, and uh, he's extensively working. He is right now working on the new construction building where Latour Hospital has been done, mm -hmm. and then in, uh, now nowadays there, there are a lot of temples. They are uh, archaeological survey of India in in uh, Simla. They are trying to put in an old structure the base isolation. They have started with the specifications. Only worry is when how to lift it, how to jack up, and then how to insert it. So that is the challenging part, and very few contractors are available to do that. Although in a bridges, a lot of people are there, but in building structure, how to cut the structure and how to lift it, that mechanism is still pending. I think for that, yes, uh, Mithinji is here, uh, <laughs> Gopalji is here, and there are. Uh, we have to make uh, more and more such uh, uh, expertise. Not that expertise. We need uh, many. Uh, we, we need their uh, help as well as the expertise that they are carrying for the last 10, 10 years plus. So Maybe uh, very this? useful. Yeah. Can I answer this? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the name of the person. I mean, who was speaking before? Ah, me. yeah. I also missed uh, who. Is it? Hello. Uh, hello. In Okay. Can you please name your self? Okay, anyway, name is uh, I'll, I'll just answer this. Yes. Yes. I mean, generally. When it comes to, I mean, uh, seismic safety and seismic uh, thing, I mean, uh, base isolation obviously is not the only process. I mean, there's something called as installation of dampers. I mean, yes, you are right. I mean, uh, base isolation helps. At, uh, but uh, by our experience, base isolation in a new building is a very good procedure to go at. For the retrofitting of an existing structures, I mean, what we have learned by practice is the dampers works well. Uh, I mean, we are currently working on a retrofitting project in Delhi, as it referred to it as a modern school. I mean, and we are designing and we are executing damp installation of dampers. It's much more easier. It's less damaging. You don't have to cut many columns out of it. I mean, you obviously will have to work with whatever systems are existingly available. So yes. I mean, base isolation, by my opinion, is a very good procedure if you are in a designing stage. And obviously, the advantage it immediately offers, which was very evident in Mr. Uh, Ghosh presentation, uh, Mr. Gaurav Ghosh presentation, that if you design a building with base isolation, you save a lot of cost on the superstructure cost. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can cut down on to your debt loads and you can save on to that. By inserting a base isolator into a building, I mean, obviously you have already uh, invested onto a heavy structure and then you are cutting that structure, adding more problems and inserting a base isolator, or you are not gaining anything out of it. So in terms of retrofitting, our exam, our experience simply speaks, dampers work much better. And designing a damper as per these uh, specifications, as per the conditions of a building, whether it's a school, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a residential, it's much more easier and it's much more easier to retrofit and execute at a very cost effective level. If I have answered the question. Yeah. 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 Dr. Rai? Sir, some of our attendees have raised their hands. Mr. Okay. Surinder Singh and Rupanita Chatterjee. Okay. If you know okay. me, I can move them into the panel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, please uh, put them in the panel. And just in fact, uh, just let me quickly go through uh, how do we certify the buildings you retrofit? How do you certify the buildings that you retrofit? Yeah, I think both of you can uh, answer this quickly. How do we certify? In fact, first, uh, it is a basically uh, if the building is older structure that we have to analyze. And ideally, in, in the German country and all these places, they do the model analysis and residual life analysis. So the structure before they put a sensors and all, then after retrofitting, they put a sensor and all, and then they rate the building that this is the, the building has been uh, out of 100%. This is 70% has been recovered back. And this is the rating system they follow uh, in, in the, in fact, in, uh, in Singapore also a lot of rating system has been done and this is they monitor and then before and after retrofitting they give and they check the 
the, the structural behavior and all. So this is one way, although in India, the practice is uh, the, the, the certification is purely on the consultant uh, recommendation and all. So it is all, all, all the gut feeling and the experience goes, but nothing has been recorded and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, the very theme of this uh, three days session is on the rating our infrastructure, health checking, and then tools and technique of retrofitting as one of that. And then finally, uh, it is of performance of retrofitted facilities, facilities. So tomorrow we'll have four presentations on these performance uh, of retrofitted facilities. You will see our participants will see more such uh, insight into this. And also uh, one thing is, uh, uh, I think, oh, something like Lakshmi Ganesh, I think base isolation itself, isolating the structure, no forces must be transferred to the superstru superstructure. As it is allowing displacement, no reactions will be developed. Uh, it is, do you say, uh, Gaurav, uh, would you like to just uh, uh, clear out this, whatever is being said? Uh, basically, the forces um, develop in the structural elements because of the interstory drifts. So, long story short, no drifts, no forces. So, ma'am is right. Yes, this is what I was saying that we are ensuring that it is confined in one isolation layer. Okay. Yeah. So, now we have two more. Uh, okay, Surendra Singh and also, yeah. You may please speak out, uh, Mr. Singh. Your questions, or you can write here. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, welcome, welcome. Sir, okay, good afternoon, sir. We want to see you. Okay. Your video. Video. Yeah. I... Is it? Start video, okay. Okay, otherwise, uh, go on. Go on. You're asking to any of the panelists. Uh, my question is uh, what is the certification uh, for the thermal power plant? Is it a building occupancy certificate or something like that? So, you are from Tata Consult. You are yes. working for the Tata Consultancy, isn't it? Yes, I'm working for the TC, Tata Consulting Engineers Limited. Uh -huh. So, uh, what do you uh, mean by certification? Before we hand over the building, is the certification is required. Mm -hmm. Then what type of certification is required for that? Uh, only building for that. In fact, uh, 2003 or four onward, uh, town and country planning organization have made a guideline, national guideline. Then many of all the states and union and territory, they have been shared that guideline and which have been again revised also in between and then uh, there are a number of certification uh, process are there uh, there are uh, 15 16 agencies uh, are there who have to certify that like whether architect structural engineer owner building material supplier and then whatever plans are there so such kind of process and formats are there for signing those things uh, as far as uh, specific structures are concerned, I think certification as per DPR, whatever detailed project reports are being made, uh, these are all made by the qualified agencies and experts. So uh, uh, and when construction facility, uh, when construction is being done by say Tata or any other agency or through some contractor, then there is always a third party check. Based on that, uh, then whether it is passing uh, those, uh, uh, say, examination or not, uh, these are all having uh, some expertise are there, but uh, in majority of, the, majority of the cases, if it is a normal buildings and uh, in our municipality area and other things, we don't give much preference. But when it is a specific, like whether it is a dam, whether it is a uh, turbo generator foundation or even NTPC, like some kind of specific chimney and other thing. So uh, the specifications that given design that being made, 
and they are thoroughly checked. That is why they serve their purpose. But what exactly uh, you are missing as a consultant to Tata? I'm, we are giving them a supervision and the design okay. consultant. Okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, if I take again the case of Delhi, uh, that municipal corporation of Delhi, they often come up with uh, some of the advertisement in the newspaper that uh, third party checking of the buildings that they are giving permission through whatever process down uh, country uh, planning section. And then there are a number of uh, engineers along with their Bioreta CV uh, that they are available with the for the last 15 years, I think they have been trying to collect uh, this, uh, uh, say, engineers and their biodata, and uh, then they made a list also available in their website. Uh, then, but since there is no legality in that, it goes on depending on the choice between uh, owner, like in case of private ownership, and then uh, the architect or even the planner or even structural engineer. And then uh, the contractor plays a big role over here. The so certifications and other things uh, becomes uh, some kind of formalities in most of the cases. And for that, the kind of events that happening like in Gurgaon that which has come up or 10 years back, uh, whatever has happened in Delhi, or in between that the building collapse that taken place in many of the metro cities, even without earthquake, then uh, public become very sensitive and our community become very vibrant, media become very much vibrant. And in, in, uh, whenever such event happens, then many of us, we get the limelight uh, to face the media or write some article. But uh, the very purpose of this uh, program is to sensitize our community and civil engineer and allied industries, whether it is retrofitting or whether it is health mapping or scanning or uh, building health mapping industry. Like I have shown some of the sample being taken from the buildings at the ground floor, which was not appropriate. So uh, the area is very much gray. Although uh, uh, we have like Dr. Gopal Rai or uh, Mr. Burma that through SEI that they have been doing a lot of such work uh, in, across the country, but uh, we need to have uh, more and more such experts uh, come up because the, uh, we are having a lot of responsibility now. Many buildings are getting older and uh, one thing is uh, here to panelists, I would say that the cost aspect is the main, uh, main concern. What is the approximate cost that takes extra or in case of retrofit, uh, Ristoflex building, uh, Gauravji may tell us that they have shown, he has shown that one story extra floor that they could add with the proper permission. So can you give uh, some accounts about the percentage wise approximate uh, that cost saving uh, with the ensuring earthquake safety, uh, what do you say about that? Sir, we, as per our experience with the showcase building and our references also, I can say that, you know, it, it will be in the scale of plus minus 10%. So there can be 10% increase in the cost and there can be reduction also. So if you choose for, let's say, if you choose for no ductile detailing, so yeah. it will be you know, you are saving on the reinforcement. Plus the forces will be much lesser. So the structural element, the size of the cross section significantly reduces. Yeah. And this is the upfront benefit. Like I said in my presentation also is the upfront benefit. So if you are, you know, if you are thinking about future, you may not need any retrofit later. So you yeah. have, be, yeah, you have to be very future oriented about your structure. If you really love your structure, then you have to ensure that at a later stage also, it will not be devastated with any earthquake forces. But yes, as far as cost is concerned, like I said, plus minus 10% margin, nothing more than that. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Nitinji, uh, 
you have taken many projects. So uh, whatever estimate before starting that you have given to the to the client and uh, your experience, your your experience that uh, although theoretically it is said that uh, more than thirty percent for retrofitting, then don't rather don't go for that. But those are the guideline only. But you have done many uh, such work that what is your uh, uh, direct experience about the estimate that you have given and the cost percentage to making the building a renewed one? So, your... so our experience has been very simple. I mean, we have rarely reached a cost of 30 cost to the tune of 30% of a new construction when we, whenever we have been doing a planning or retrofitting. Retrofitting's cost, I mean, in my experience for the past 10 years has rarely crossed 20, 22, 23% maximum. We have never reached even 30% mm -hmm. all the projects that we have done. I mean, okay. this is an exercise that we have done over time and again. What generally happens is people start adding the cost of the finishes and the cost of the other facilities and the kind of things that they immediately jump to join. Oh, my column is so big, I will add this to this room and this and that. Uh -huh. When they get greedy about these things and then they start calculating the cost, then they said, oh, I will make it better. But when you do an actual cost analysis of a retrofitting of a similar thing and retro, uh, cost of construction of a similar quality and quality what way you were, we have rarely crossed 20-22% figure. So retrofitting, by my opinion, is, is a huge, huge thing. All you need to do is, I mean, the three questions that I have read in the chat are yeah. very relevant. One obviously is about the uh, thing. But then what we need to do is we need to define the process of the retrofitting very, very efficiently. I mean, obviously, retrofitting for me cannot be intrusive to many other things. I mean, it can't get to a stage that you start losing out to the advantages of the space and the land and everything that you have, which at the end of the day, structure is no cost. The cost is the, uh, is the real estate. The real estate is your floor area. So, so your premiumness comes to that part. So yeah, when you do a cost analysis onto that part, then you understand the retrofitting comes out to be a much cheaper and easier option. The second things that I have often uh, encountered is people come up and say, Ki, oh, retrofitting is very slow. Itna tode ke banata, jaldi ban jata and this and that. Yes, possible. Hai. But then at the end of the day, you, have, you are not adding the cost of demolishing and dismantling your existing structures. I mean, then you don't add your cost to the point you have to move out the, uh, the function that particular building is serving to. It doesn't, that function has to continue. Even if that building is not there, you're shifting out to somewhere else, the function has to continue. So retrofitting, by my opinion, in every aspect, if you put your cost into a table, in putting up your risk cost, putting up your time cost or a life cycle cost, anything, or even the cost of a structure at that particular point, retrofitting has to be the most cost effective manner, the solution to it. The building uh, life can be enhanced. The certification can be taken care of. Obviously, when the building was constructed, it was certified up to a certain thing. The retrofitting design is only improving that certification process. I mean, the strengths that are desired to this. Once those strengths are desired, your codes are very, very easy to certify those things. I mean, based on your code, based on your analysis and the stats and the model and everything. I mean, this uh, certification is no problem. The problem is that mindset. Problem is the mindset. Ye crack aagya, ye kamzor ho gaya, ye kamzor ho gaya. Ab is kamzori ko humko toad ke hi dobara banana hai. For me, a building is a human body. I mean, you go to a doctor if you have any ailment. If you have even have a cancer, if you have a corrosion in your building, the thing is, your cancer can be treated, your corrosion can be treated. So it's as simple as that for me at least. Okay. So great. As rightly said and explained. Huh? And I can see, oh, lot many, a uh, lot of, lot of queries are coming up now. Really fantastic. Huh? Uh, rather, uh, I would say before going to the question, because we have Duponita uh, Poria Chatterjee, uh, who is there in our panel. 
मैम वेलकम तो डायरेक्टली लाइक योर क्वेश्चन और योर क्वेरीज वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सप्लेन रूपांडिता और आई कैन सी मुकेश कुमार जी इज हियर काइंडली put on your uh, uh good evening sir yeah, yeah good evening sir sorry sir actually i am in the office i could not actually okay okay please anyway yeah. uh, my question is like uh, how to like determine whether we can go for like retrofitting of the structure if uh, say for example initially we have carried out a uh, uh, core test or say a uh, rebound hammer test and if we are getting a value which is uh, very less say for example 10 mpa or 8 mpa can we uh, do retrofitting of such a structures even for uh, rebar we have carried out test where the strength was around 250 to 300 mpa and the corrosion is uh, extremely uh, high so is it possible to do retrofitting of such a structure where uh, you know concrete as well as uh, uh, rebar had lost its life uh, predominantly as well as the structure is more than 40 years ago okay wow i think answering this question will take at least half an hour <laughs> yes but it is now uh, the experts that you please uh, nitin ji okay i'll answer this sir. i mean i mean uh, the gentleman over here is slightly confusing uh, to parts uh, he says ki the existing building has got i mean uh, is part below the standards of construction even the concrete is much below to the uh, m10 m8 degree whatever and the reinforcement is also deteriorated to an extent that probably it is now retrofitting never says that you have to enhance the strength of what is available retrofitting is a process with which you can supplement strength to this particular member now supplementing of the strength can be done by any means supplementing of the strength is you can jacket that thing you jacket stays the jacket can be designed in a manner that it takes the care of the load that is being imposed onto that uh, column the uh, retrofitting in that process can be defined by to an extent adding to the strength by means of steel plating so your section still remains the same but your plate takes the additional loads which is deficient in that thing so what i'm trying to say is the retrofitting does not mean that you limit your thoughts to the existing available strength or the deteriorated part or whatever retrofitting at the same time also means supplementing it which is very much possible thank you sir thank you so much for your clarification and uh, myself rupanita poida chatter ji okay yeah welcome yes sir um, i have a question uh, uh, regarding uh, base isolation and retrofitting uh, sir if uh, primarily we have done soil testing before um, uh, doing the um, substructure but if uh, such such a case such a case arises that after the uh, soil excavation and soil um, um, soil data um, um, collection has been done somehow after doing the after construct constructing the substructure if somehow there is a uh, settlement in the ground sometimes happen what will be the effect on base isolator okay uh, before that i would say uh, okay you finished your question yes i have done mine okay so the point that uh, when you have got the soil data huh, then with that data first you think if somehow if somehow part has to be removed from our uh expert uh, through using our expertise when soil data is there uh below, before excavation and soil data is to be analyzed that is there any such kind of loose pockets are there or not that is the first and primary uh, job of uh, geotechnical or even uh, those who are doing the ground engineering that when the building or construction will be done what is the load expected and what are the influence area and which will be subjected to extra pressure due to the superstructure when it will be constructed but if a soil data is just kept as a record 
and then without using without knowing that what would, what are the uh, say loose pockets are there then that is the first fault in that case and it is rather better that it has occurred before that base isolations are provided okay so first thing is uh, like in case of retro uh, resistoflex building you know uh, that the before putting the rough foundation it was it was uh, made some some effort was made to increase the bearing capacity of the soil before putting the uh, this rough foundation rough foundation so that it gives uniform pressure on the uh, below the uh, below the rough foundation the uniformity is very very essential and in that case the soil the investigation that they did for more than uh, 10 meter i think that uh, spt value and other uh, non uh, other uh, test like uh, see, uh, shear test and other thing bearing capacity and influence area those are the domain that where the safe bearing capacity are recommended based on settlement criteria uh, expected from the load so once that is done then the second then the question of base isolation device what will happen to base isolation device uh, if such measures are taken appropriately then nothing will happen to the base isolation that is what i want to say but after base isolation which uh, gorab ji has explained very well that uh, uh, there are certain tolerance that he has shown very nicely that what kind of tolerance or what kind of horizontal shift that it is permitted which they have measured kept all around the building so that uh, this uh, isolator can move at the maximum level of uh, about 20 22 cm and so in that case uh, uh, that base isolate isolators when they will be provided before that one has to be very ensured about the uniform uh, say reaction from the ground taking care of some of the ground improvement method uh, wherever required based on the soil data and observation okay thank you sir okay anything uh, gaurav would like to add sir you so sir you answered sir nothing <laughs> more okay uh anybody else I think uh, now it is 5:30, and I hope uh, that uh, we have been able to reach to our uh, milestone, and we are receiving a lot of uh, accolades from the participants. And if uh, uh, now I think uh, Nitin Ji is a very busy person, and Gaurav Ji is sitting in his office. and i am sitting in my office so uh, let us say that uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us and also for tomorrow uh, please uh, keep us involved and evolve with you in this theme where we are going to talk about four speakers in the performance of retrofitted facility sorry to interrupt sir there is yeah. one more attendee here Mr. Sajjan Nagir. Okay. Would you like to ask? Okay, please, please. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. A very good evening. Yeah. Uh, my small question is to Nitin sir. Uh huh. I want to know, in case of retrofitted building, there are uh, uh, joints at the roof beam junctions, and in case of fresh construction, we avoid jun joints at these junctions. So how do we take earthquake forces in no, those buildings? Sir, I'll answer this. Sir, uh, if you are retrofitting with a joint at the beam level and the slab level, then the process is wrong. In the correct process, there would not be any joint at all. <laughs> yes. I'll answer this, and I know where are you coming from. I am. I'll answer this. I mean, I'll, I'll rather explain your question first to you. You are referring that when the jacketing is done, then at times the jacketing gets ended beneath the slab. Yes. 
uh, and that is exactly where the joint happens so that is one wrong practice the way to do it is you have to puncture the slab above and the concrete needs to be poured from the top not from the bottom thank you thank you have i answered yeah i think let me, let, me, let me add nitin ji yes sir yeah yeah i think uh, what jacketing we do is a purely axial and moment transfer we do in fact in iit iit bombay and iit chennai when we have tested that uh, while the earthquake and all we need to do some additional junction confinement and do the slotting of the laminate inside by 100 mm and this so that we can insert some uh, additional reinforcement to the junction member exactly so that exactly. from the face to the junction the load can be transferred to the uh, mm. actual junction what we call not the arms mm. so there are ways because what we see in india or other way that only people do jacketing they consider that the junction is confined mm. but this is the half frame people practice i think we should have a like Uh, there is one uh, guideline is there association of structure rehabilitation hmm. the yeah. one of the guideline where the all the calculation and everything has been shown on rehabilitation first time in india the rehabilitation has been pictured as a guideline and all calculation handy handy calculation has been given for bridges building and all hmm. i think it is a good platform to uh, showcase that part also yeah. so we should yeah. refer now the rehabilitation is become a professional field yeah, yeah. design can everything and because 15 years back when i started people were doing on the thumb rule but now yeah. on rehabilitation ask for a calculations so yeah. uh, so junction also i will say that it is still it is not addressed properly in jacketing or steel plating it is just a moment arresting we are doing yeah right yeah right, right. yeah thank you so much excellent thank you sir thank you. Uh, may i know your name please sir My name is Sajjan, sir. Sajjan. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I I could not see your face, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> I am sure, sir. <laughs> you are now where you are working? I am a I am a retired person. I am working as a consultant advisor. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Great, great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for encouraging us and your specific observations and. 15 years back yes nobody was everybody was using thumb rule but now it has become a uh, very much uh, calculation analysis and performance and certification like uh, uh, mukesh ji mukesh kumar ji said this certification of their say power plant and other things also are becoming very important so uh, and there are guidelines are coming up even in many other countries also things are coming up in the last 10 15 years only uh, and lots of uh, workshops seminars are being done discussed and uh, case studies are taken up uh, there are conferences are being held only case only based on case studies only specific journals are being published and uh, there are more discussions are going on and new new aspects are coming up to take up this retrofitting health assessment and then performance uh, predictions of the performance so with this uh, i think dr gopal rai if uh, you are there yes, you sir. may please enlighten us you with your some comments as well as suggestion to go forward yeah i think sir this is a very good forum and as a as a combination of disaster mitigation and in the rehabilitation plays a major role if we do proper monitoring and huh. then on the fundamental structure if we do proper rehabilitation then we we will save the earth from any disaster so uh, that is the right sequence of following usually we yeah. do monitoring afterwards but we should do monitoring before so that we can know, know the causes of rehabilitation and all to so correct solution can go and we can avoid any disaster because of that so i think this is the yeah the right way approach i think your title says same yeah thank you very much and also now as we have discussed yesterday also that there are many uh, sensors and iot based design uh, devices monitoring even uh, there are there are lot of innovations and disruptive technologies has come up to check the our built up facilities online 
and check it on our mobile or in our soft, in our desktop to see that uh, whether temperature exceeding or cracks are increasing or not and doing some kind of remote survey, now digital twin, a lot of new, new keywords are coming up, especially in the software mode. And we as a structure uh, from the civil engineering professions and allied industries uh, uh, that we have to uh, uh, take all these things in our uh, you know, consideration while dealing a uh, building as Nitinji also told that building is just like a human being, the health uh, has to be checked. And then accordingly, medicine have to be prescribed and as well as it is to be monitored even after prescriptions and insertion of the medicine. So uh, this area is, uh, is very new, challenging. And uh, I hope uh, that, uh, that today's uh, deliberation has opened up uh, this aspect and importance of this one with the presentation by uh, Nitin Verma from SEI and uh, Dr. Gopal Rai, and also giving a case study that which is very much existent in OIDA sector two by, uh, on behalf of Ristoflex uh, by Gaurav Ghosh. Uh, so with this, I think uh, I would, Thank you once again. And now I give it back to Ribiart Media for the rest of the- Thank you, sir. Thank you for attending today's session. We hope to see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. The topic for tomorrow will be performance of retrofitted facilities. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you.